Ah, okay. Just just do it again. So I think everyone can listen to me now. Okay. So uh, welcome to uh, PyCon uh, Hong Kong 2020. Uh, this is the opening session. So I'm going to uh, use uh, maybe five minutes to talk about the uh, status the, uh, of the uh, of the uh, okay of the uh, Python community in 2020. So I'm Sammy. Just just spend a lot of time to <laughs> to fix my microphone problems. Yeah. I'm the conference chair of uh, this conference. So uh, Jack Binks uh, 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 organized the uh, uh, survey of the uh, state of state of the developer uh, ecosystem 2020 in the early of this year. So uh, this is the uh, key takeaways uh, for the uh, Python programming, programming language. So you can find that uh, Python has overtake uh, Java in the list of languages. Uh, used that in last 20 months. And it's also the most that language. And uh, Python is one of the top uh, three language developers are planning to, uh, to adopt or migrate to. Uh, so the other two languages actually is, uh, uh, I think is a watch or uh, and go as well, yeah. Uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in this year, uh, it's still seven, percent of uh, Python developer uh, using uh, Python 2. So, uh, so, but the uh, Python 2 is no longer maintained from uh, uh, January 1. So it's still a bit uh, harder than, uh, uh, than, than the expectations, yeah. And, um, uh, and about 40% uh, uh, of, the, of the Python developer use the Python for the uh, data analysis. Uh, machine learning and the uh, uh, web stepping as well. And uh, Django is, is still on, uh, is the most uh, used uh, web frameworks uh, in addition to uh, Python. And request is the uh, most used framework or libraries uh, in addition to Python. Uh, Python developer, uh, uh, let me see. Oh. Okay. And name is, is the, um, ah, sorry. And the uh, uh, LumPy and Pandas are are uh, on the top of the uh, data science framework uh, in addition to Python. And, and, and yes, uh, and Linux is, uh, is the most used uh, technology uh, in the Python. Uh, 60, uh, 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 over 60% uh, of the uh, developer, uh, of the Python developer uh, use uh, Linux as their development environment more than uh, other uh, developers for the uh, for the other language, um, half um, half of the uh, Python developer uh, use uh, Python professional or com community additions for their uh, for their Python developer development. Um, the uh, Python Software Foundation. Uh, is uh, doing a Python uh, developers survey uh, for, for this year. And this is now extended to uh, lo November 7. So you can find the survey link from the uh, Hong Kong Python user group, uh, Facebook group, and also the uh, uh, PSF uh, social level as well. Uh, currently, uh, uh, Version three point six to three point nine are the uh, active uh, Python release, and starting from the uh, version uh, three point seven, uh, data class uh, is a new feature introduced to the Python programming language, and uh, a wireless uh, operator is introduced from uh, three point eight, and also the newly released uh, version three point nine. 
uh, it introduced a dictionary uh, Julian operator. So you can just simply uh, combine two dictionary uh, into one dictionary. And for the Python com community in uh, this year, uh, due to uh, COVID-19, so the Python Software Foundation uh, canceled the uh, PyCon US uh, this year and moved it to uh, online. And, and it also uh, reopened its uh, GRAM program in September for a uh, virtual uh, Python event only. And they are also doing the uh, end of year uh, fund, fund, fund license program as well. PSF also released their annual report and, and also I would like uh, uh, you to join the PSF membership as well. And for the uh, PyCon in, uh, in, in APAD, PyCon Hong Kong organized a virtual conference uh, uh, on May and also November. And also we, uh, we, su we suggest uh, Python developers to uh, make donations to the uh, Python Survey Foundations to, sub to, sub to support their works. Um, PyCon APAN uh, this year by uh, Malaysia team is also moved to a uh, 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 virtual conference as well. And the call for host of the PyCon APAN this year it, uh, is just ended. It's now waiting uh, for votes from, uh, from PyCon uh, organizer in APAN. So, uh, in this conference, we have uh, 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 16 uh, uh, speakers. And we would like to thank our sponsor, uh, uh, Cover Health, uh, Microsoft, and MySQL. Um, organizer uh, of this conference is the uh, Hong Kong Creative Open Technology Associations, Hong Kong Py uh, Python User Group, and also Open Source Hong Kong. And here, and this this our staff list, uh, staff list, and um, and all of us are volunteers. And uh, please also obey the uh, PyCon uh, cover content, and also uh, we su suggest that uh, post your sharing about uh, PyCon Hong Kong with the hashtag uh, PyCon HK and PyCon HK Chinese Chinese on social networks and your blog as well. So we are going to uh, start the uh, uh, sponsor sessions. And the next session is uh, Py, uh, Python is your friend with MySQL shell by Afima. Oh, okay. okay. Please wait a moment. Sure. Uh, okay, Afrim, please, uh, please share your, please share your slide. So you, sure. you can now share your screen. Okay. So, hi everyone. Okay. okay can you now hear my voice? To, I, to Ivan. Okay. So, uh, I hope you can all uh, see clear uh, the screen. So the sections uh, today. Uh, my SQL, uh, we have two sections. One uh, from uh, myself. My name is Ivan Ma, okay, Ma Chao Sing, uh, from Hong Kong, we're based in Hong Kong. And we have another uh, colleague, uh, his name is Ryan. He will be speaking uh, uh, about my SQL, uh, how we actually de develop applications actually on cloud, okay, with the Python. So, uh, so how we develop like current data of applications. So, which is the, the one uh, next to me. So, uh, the sections today, uh, my section is about, okay, how we use MySQL shell and how actually Python related to MySQL shell. Going over this uh, 30 minutes, I'm going over the really, really uh, funny and, and actually really friendly tools. So let me actually, uh, go after this, this slide and also demo. So who am I? My name is Ivan Mar. Okay, if you 
actually use MySQL and you're based in Hong Kong, so you can register the Facebook group, Hong Kong MySQL user group. So I'm the lead, okay, to this group. And I, uh, with MySQL, uh, I'm, MySQL is from Oracle. So I'm basically like pre sales okay, in the, uh, the organizations. And from Sun Microsystem uh, in 2008, which uh, it acquired uh, MySQL. And after that years, I certify uh, all, okay, MySQL certifications, okay, in 2009. So over this like 10 plus years. And before that, actually, uh, Sybase, Oracle, Exact Data, okay, I've been managed to do databases. And as well as, uh, yeah, with Sun Microsystem, I was also a Java speaker. Okay. So let's move on to talk about, okay, what's today? So what exactly is uh, Python and related to MySQL? So on one side is people use Python to develop applications. On another side, people actually use Python to manage, to actually do a uh, like uh, scripting, okay, to work with MySQL. So, uh, in the past, I've been talking some sort of the how we use Python to connect to database and doing like how reliable, okay, MySQL can be and how Python actually work together with MySQL and also security and all these things. And today I go over to the other side of uh, like maintenance and how we manage, how we actually work with like using the toolbox, okay, which today it is the MySQL shell. My SQL shell, what is that? So basically, my SQL shell is like a toolbox which can accommodate um, multiple languages. On one side, it supports JavaScript. It also supports standard SQL access. And of course, today, Python, which the main topic how Python actually can work, okay, using this toolbox. And you can see uh, people actually use SQL to access uh, my SQL. People may actually run script. The script can be in the batch job or interactive or some stuff like this, okay. In the past, if we have only my SQL client and only the SQL statements to go over, okay, is the work with my SQL, what we did, it's like even looping, we need to create a, a store procedures or we have to go over like on the shell script and go over a while loop, which is a, uh, a bit okay, tricky. And every time the while loop, uh, we need to go into the mask and connect, it's connect and then back is in the loop. So this is actually not very effective. So what if the, today the script is actually like a program and uh, Python as a like script a for loop and you can do it. And it, it has the, all the functions like the plane, like a, a variable assignment, and we can actually maintain multiple sections within a script. Okay, later on we'll talk about it. And there is actually like how we do output format and output format is like we do a batch job, we do a script and we like to have the table format or actually JSON or common separated uh, output. And we can access through SQL, we can access through the other side, which we'll talk about the XDAP API, particularly the, uh, it is so-called today document store or actually JSON access. And there's also the admin API or shell API, which manage the InnoDB cluster, the HA part, and as well as how replications like uh, replicas and source. Okay, so we'll go over a bit Okay, today is, uh, it is uh, just, a, just a short sections. So we'll go over some of the topics and as well as some kind of maintenance, like uh, people will do upgrade from the previous version like 5.7 to so today, okay, 8.0. And people may do maintenance job or actually people may manage the data by having imported data or actually export or import or actually like backup uh, thumb and note. So it has to be fast, it has to be parallelized. So this can be actually easily, okay, uh, handled with the MySQL shell today. And uh, we will talk about how we extend uh, the MySQL shell through reporting 
as well as plugin. This is one of the main topics today. Okay, so let's get start to uh, what we go over uh, the slide. So uh, there are two types of protocol. One is the standard way of using, okay, uh, people using MySQL may know how SQL can be accessed through like 3306. And there is uh, another protocol called uh, X protocol and it's MySQL X. And that's another way which we will use it. Okay, uh, right after this. And as mentioned earlier, I mean APIs to manage like cluster, you know, DB cluster replica sets and sandboxes and uh, the API shell API, which we will talk about a bit uh, utilities and how we do reporting and plugins and also managing the credential easily. And other utility as mentioned earlier, okay, subway checker. Okay, so people can safely and know be, uh, before you upgrade and fix the things, okay, before you actually uh, do the actual upgrade. And JSON import, um, data import and low and dump. So they are actually quite very, very good tools today. So uh, Python, okay, one of the thing is uh, the version and something like how we can inject uh, more modules. So here uh, in the latest versions, which today 8.022 and just released a lot long ago in October. So we support how, because the shell uh, embed Python to it. So it has the site packages, all these Python packages, how we can update all these packages. Uh, so uh, in the past, it's actually built in. We have to find some way to match the versions. But what today we can actually safely is to use. Okay, share a screen. I hope you can actually see clear. So uh, start it up with the MySQL shell is, uh, here like this, okay? So this is MySQL shell, which yum or actually install a package. And uh, with Python, we can see, or uh, we can actually do like PIP and install something, just example, okay? Just an example. Uh, this is similar thing, right? So what we can see here is we have the MySQL shell, which we have the Python modules, okay? and we have the Python modules called like PIP, how we install a uh, certain package, like how to upgrade the PIP because at certain time we need to do something, right? At this time, the PIP is the most updated because I just did it. And we may actually install some other modules so we can uh, import. So we can import uh, the request modules, which uh, it does the uh, HTTP, right? So uh, anyway, uh, that's actually very good things that today we can embed this uh, uh, Python modules. Okay, go for next. MySQL upgrade checker. So how that works? Basically, you can see uh, MySQL shell with by default, uh, there is a support JavaScript. It also support Python. So MySQL uh, shell, we can you choose to check with the, uh, what happens to the upgrade if uh, we do this. So we can actually use the utilities, which is the global objects to go over and the checkings one, two, three, four, five steps. So let's just take a look at uh, uh, a simple example. So with the Python and, okay, we are not calling the Python free, but actually my SQL shell. And we can connect to a database, for example, okay, which is uh, today I have already set up a database, which is already on the server. So with this, uh, we have utilities. Uh, if we look at this and you can see there are many utilities, I mean, the global objects uh, declare. So utility is one of those. By having the objects, uh, yeah, uh, putting into the shell, we can use a simple ways to click the tab and it will actually show you what we have uh, available to you to choose. Okay, at this moment, it is JavaScript. We can actually change this to Python. We can change this to SQL. So this is the mode that we can actually switch between language. So with the SQL, it is SQL statement. With Python, 
and we can actually decay web, I mean, using variables or actually the similar way, those uh, global objects is actually the same way, but the function name is has different. Okay, usually it is like something underscore, something underscore. So for the check for server upgrade is check underscore for server upgrade. So just type a few words. Okay, it is actually auto complete and it does this and then it will try to invoke the, uh, the checker. Okay, for this one, because this is the same version, we don't need to do upgrade. Okay, because the same version. Okay, so, but uh, if this is like, uh, we, need, we need to do upgrade before, okay, we, uh, to do the actual work, this is actually pretty, pretty good uh, maintenance uh, checking. So as the MySQL shell, we also look at not purely the general SQL access, okay, but also the doc, document store. So document store is like uh, the new way, schemaless database, and you can, sometimes we look at the collection API. So collection API means what? Uh, it, it is different from like tables, okay? Let's walk through a little bit, okay? So here we just connect to the port number 3306. But what if 3306 in here, uh, we can try to use a database, say world X, okay? So in here, there's the sections, okay? The sections uh, uh, objects has different, has some sort of the uh, <coughs> functions, okay, available. But what if I change this to XDAF API? So when I connect to the other, okay, port number, which is the same server, I would say, okay. Now it is 33060, it is not 3306. So it, I changed the protocol from MySQL to MySQL X. So with this in place, then what happens to the sections? Look at the difference. So even the sections has different things to do, okay? So now let's look at what is the document store. So for use the raw X, and now we have the DB objects, which is on the raw X, and we can see what variables in here. We can say, oh, get uh, collections. So we can say get collections as, and how many connections in this database, in this schema? So it is just one. So we can actually see this to get the country info. So the country info is the collections and this collections we can actually uh, like using the API, CLUD API, and we can find the data and we can actually say, okay, to show one or two uh, rows, let's say it shows two rows, okay. So by having this, we actually use this, okay, to look at the data. And what if this is the table? We can actually get tables rather than to get collections. So within this, actually there are three tables, like for example, cities. So we can actually put DB dot city and uh, if this is a Python, we can actually do a like my table, which is equals to this city. Okay, so having this, my table is exactly is the uh, variables pointing to the, to the tables. And we can get this, okay, see what happens to the, uh, to the functions. We can select all the data for the cities. It has a lot, okay. We can limit the data set, which at this moment is 4,000 rows. And we can limit only to show only 30, just an example, or actually do it with the where clause and build the criteria and then showing the data. So it, it access the database through different of API. One is from the uh, document store as JSON, and we can actually manage or actually access the data through the standard SQL access uh, select API. So uh, it is quite flexible. So my SQL shell with the Python, so this is just, uh, uh, we, I did the demo. So more or less, we have seen this get collections and we have seen this to go over the country info and with the JSON 
and we can actually do even the criteria modify and also transactions. Okay, so uh, and here you can limit to the table and select only like limit to three, and we can see clear. So let's take a look a bit more in like this pictures. Document store, we just go over. Okay, uh, at the end of the, the sections, we will try to tell you about InnoDB cluster, how the shell, we can use that to manage. And now uh, the shell API. So you can see in here, this is one of the things, okay, we can actually execute. So you can see we just do the sections uh, run SQL statement and select, okay, from a table. So, and then this is like a program and we can put into a script like using a classical uh, protocol, 3306 versus uh, the XDAF uh, protocol. And it is like, okay, by default, we add one zero, okay, 3306 to it. So as the DBA, so the activity, they may build more script and they do like uh, kind of the things like upgrade JSON and how to import, export uh, and data import and note, come and note. So we can uh, use the shell API to do things. So utility, we just did it. And we can export the table. We can actually load the table, import the tables. It can be the CSV. So what this actually uh, important is, it is not just, okay, uh, in and out, but also to manage how we can do it uh, a bit more uh, flexible. So if we look into a more details, like just for example, uh, to you, and then we may, for example, to, to load the table, import the table, just an example, import table. Okay, so we can get the help and that actually show you how we can get it easier. And a lot of things we can do. We can do the things to load the data, how we switch the column, uh, what the column speci uh, specifications, all this actually be very flexible. Okay, so it can be the files, okay, from the local disk. It can be somewhere, okay, in the uh, internet that access through the HTTP, okay. So there is also the way when we like do the data uh, upload or actually dump, uh, it may be a lot of data. Somehow we do not have the disk. We may leverage the cloud. For example, Oracle Cloud, we have like the storage. So we have the OCI, which we have the storage, you can export to there. And then from there, we can actually input back and then move the data from your on-premise database or anywhere the database to goes into the uh, MySQL database service on the cloud. So which we will talk about this uh, in the next sections. Okay. So here with the thumb and roll, uh, we focus like uh, more just than the, the features. Uh, it is actually more like performance and integrations. So performance wise, it can be multi-threaded. It can be, uh, yeah, sometimes when we talk about the MySQL dump or uh, to dump the data and run the data back to the database, it may be too big to, to load the data or actually it is single threaded. So it is slow, okay? So this actually the tool is quite, uh, quite easy to use and very fast. So uh, the next time you look at the data dump and know and with the logical way, uh, this is the good tool, okay? Built in the compression. Uh, and there is also one thing for the integration, yes. Okay, that one I mentioned about integrates to the optic storage, which on the cloud. And the second one is uh, on the cloud, like uh, our MySQL database service, there should be some sort of like a, a compatibility to turn on and off. So that actually is make it easiest for us to move data around. So let's look at uh, interesting part, how we extend the report. So what is so-called the report? Okay, let's look at here. Okay, so you can see 
from the screen, we can show, show uptime. So the uptime is not something the default. I'm showing you the outcome, okay? It is easy, okay? But we can actually do something else. Like for example, uh, our database, do we have any tables? It does not have the primary key. Or uh, how, what is the database size? Okay, this is like, like a very simple questions, but somehow we need to go to the Google and search for the SQL statement and then yeah, run it. So to the best, okay, it is kind of like a command, which is also called a report. How we can do this, okay, is to give this like show report. Okay, for this, uh, I have already do this. Okay, this actually like the way we have the show and we have available reports, which I have already extended. So the way I extended the report is, uh, here, there is a report which we call DB sites. So we can actually do this. So report, we can do show uptime. Okay, but how can we do this? Okay, so here is the point. So we can actually have the SQL statement to select. Okay, and then do this. Okay, with the SQL, we can run this and then produce this. But how can we embed to this MySQL uh, shell? So here is the step. We have this. Under your MySQL, we can customize, okay? With the uh, home directory, uh, by default, it will actually look at the .MySQL shell, and then what initial, it actually look up some sort of the uh, uh, reports, and this is the Python. So it will define the report and the SQL statement, execute it, okay? and fetch, fetch the data and return as the report and back to the MySQL shell. So it is quite simple. If you have this and you have the statement, so you, we can build whatever we like, okay? So the first part, and the second part is to tell, is to register the report to the uh, MySQL shell. And that's why we, we have the DB size or even we can change the name DBA, DB what, okay? And the function name db size, which we define it okay in the previous slide, and also the descriptions and possibly people may uh, send uh, argument, like uh, if high number of uh, rows, then we can restrict the number of rows or options. So this is one way. Okay, we let me show you the actual. So if we actually look at this, we can go over in here. There is the MySQL shell. And there is the init, init B. And here, this is actually, we have the uptime.py. And this is what? Uh, the SQL statement, how it runs, it has to go over the connections and then uh, print the uh, uptime, okay, from the uh, schema, which the status, and then the uptime is the variables. So it will show you. So we can actually do whatever we like and then put up into like uh, a maintenance uh, modules. Okay, so let's do a quicker. That's another one's the DB size, right? DB size it is quite similar. Okay, connects to it, and then we can get this to run and show we have the DB size. And once we click the DB size, and we actually have the table and showing so the the what the table size and number of tables. Okay, easy. It is just easy. Okay, so one way we look at is a report. The other way is uh, how can we generate more like system objects? What I mean here is how can we do this here? Okay, can we create a system objects A, B, C in here? Okay, so for example, this is system info. Okay, so the system info. So the system info is something I have, I put it in here. So let me remove it. Just for example, now my SQL shell, there is no system info in here, okay? The system info is just the way 
I can move it back, system info. Okay, so if I do this, and now I look at this, now I get system info in here. So it is dynamically assigned a objects, okay, in here. So how can this be done? In the MySQL uh, 8.0.22, the latest one, we create another annotation it's called plugin. Okay, this annotation plugin is a facility, which is so, so flexible, which declare I have the class system info. So once we declare, and so what's the details? So we can actually de declare all the details plugin in functions. And by having this, we have the get function key, uptime, blah, blah, blah. So having this, uh, we can go over, okay, to do things, okay, within this system info class. So that's the way in here, if I try to type system info dot, so I have two functions in here. So the first one, it does not work because, uh, yeah, let's do it uh, in Python. So the system info and dot uptime. So it does not work because it is not connected. So let me connect to a server. So once we have the, this, so I can see this. So it is also another way to integrate, to actually extend the MySQL shell with report as the daily activity. So uh, we, we put in the script, those repeated work, we just put it there. Okay, to be quick. So here, this can be another get plot key, something like this. Okay, last part. Okay, so MySQL shell and how we can create like managing a, a cluster. Okay, here where I'm showing you uh, to build a cluster. So first of all, I will have the MySQL so the custom means the availability, okay, with number of servers, okay, running. It can be on different machines, but for demo purpose, uh, it's just simple on the one uh, virtual machines in here. So basically, I will set up three server. So first of all, those actually I create the server. I don't use the MySQL shell. I assume they, are, they can be actually up and running. So I create three server, which is the 3310, 32030. Okay. So they are actually running on the same server. With the MySQL shell, later on, I will try to use the MySQL shell and create and then show you the script. So here I configure. Here, I just, this is my SQL shell. So I can actually use this, my SQL shell, and I can actually run this, just for example, even Python and DBA configure instance. And I can actually run this, just an example. Okay. Oh, sorry. This has notice. Just put up a
I haven't done the two, I believe. Sorry. The server has not been started. Okay. So now started. So configure. So basically configure. And we can actually check. So here, the MySQL shell, Python. And we can do the checking. So whether the configuration is, is doing good. So GR, I mean, it's the password and the host name, which is the host name uh, 16, if you want all. Right, so this is like this. So Python can do it or JavaScript can do it. Okay, let's check config, they are the same because we can actually do this. And this is to create cluster. We can use the MySQL shell to create a cluster and using Python or JavaScript. And here I just run it. So you can see, okay, for the time matter, I just quickly to go through and we can combine the server together. So MySQL shell is able to manage, not just programming, but also manage to create and facilitate Okay, it's the live reliability, okay, for the database that you have the system. So here, the server is actually running, uh, the database has three databases running and it can be on the machine A, machine B and machine C. Okay, so I hope I have get a bit of the, uh, yeah, ideas how MySQL shell work. So here's the summary. So you can see my uh, MySQL shell supporting the basic SQL, but as well as how the Python work together. And it is multi, uh, poly, polyglot uh, language and XDEF API that we demonstrate how the uh, uh, collection API, as well as how it's like doc table and the way to access the data. And also like utility and all this shell API and the uh, cluster utility and how we do scripting, how we actually extend full reports, how we extend it uh, through the plugins. Okay, it is a powerful and very flexible, uh, flexible toolbox. Uh, for now, any questions, please raise and see if I can give you an answers uh, at this moment. or the chat room, you can actually put this on the chat room. Okay, uh, so MySQL shell basically, uh, it, is, it, it is open source, no license. What today I share, okay, everything is uh, open source. So you can do it, okay, with the, yeah, just download from uh, download.mysql.com. And ODB cluster, okay, all these things, you can do it. Any questions? Shell is very, very good to use, okay. Uh, you can see this is like a universal tools. Uh, we try to unify this kind of interface, which in the past we use my SQL as a client. Okay, so now today uh, still there. Okay, but my SQL shell is able to handle most of the things. Any second things? No more? Okay, uh, Sammy, uh, I hand it over back to you. And then the next is Ryan. Thanks everybody. So yeah, we are, we are going to uh, this, the second session. So the second session is uh, the is uh, develop a uh, correlative applications using MySQL database service by 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 Ivan Cool. 
uh, Ivan Kwan. So, uh, right, 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 Ryan Kwan. Ryan Kwan, yeah. Ryan Kwan. Okay, um, thank you, Sammy. And uh, yeah, thank you for uh, yeah, uh, giving me this time to uh, share with you a little bit on uh, MySQL database service. So Ivan and I are actually colleagues. So I think uh, he has uh, done a good job on uh, explaining the MySQL shell and you know, the Python uh, interface. So in this session, um, I would uh, go into um, the topic of uh, um, using Python to develop uh, cloud native applications with MySQL database service. So these are the topics that I prepared for uh, today. Um, I'm not sure whether I can fully cover everything. Uh, looks a lot, but uh, I, I try my best. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the MySQL database service, uh, which is a cloud uh, database service, which we have just uh, recently launched. Um, so we publicly market uh, this database service um, since September 1st this year. Um, then we're gonna talk about a little bit on uh, Python application uh, using XDEF API. Um, just going through a little bit. Um, if you are today, if you're using Python with MySQL already, um, you should consider uh, using the XDEF API. And um, how do you take advantage of um, the, our MySQL InnoDB cluster? And lastly, um, how do you, um, you know, deploy uh, a REST API uh, together with uh, uh, MySQL database service in the cloud or an Oracle cloud? Yep, cloud native development is the in thing now, right? So uh, lots of um, organizations are exploring you know, using open source software and public or private cloud services or hybrid cloud services to build solutions. So cloud native computing foundation um, is driving this uh, uh, initiative. And Oracle is part of the foundation and quite a lot of uh, our product is part of uh, the foundation um, the recommended uh, path for uh, using it to develop a cloud native uh, application. So you can see uh, MySQL is one of the um, a recommended database for cloud native development. So now that we have uh, the native cloud database service in the cloud, um, so that will help you or any of your customers or you know, if you're working on any project, um, you can consider MySQL cloud database service. So it's the only uh, MySQL enterprise uh, database uh, in the cloud. So it's developed and managed fully by our engineering team. So just a quick look at the, uh, the MySQL database service. So the MySQL database service uh, will only deploy in the public um, but it, sorry, the private subnet. So this is a private. So you're at, never exposed to the public. So you've got to have a, a Bastion server in order for you to talk to the MySQL database, right? So, um, yeah. So it's fully uh, secure. Um, you know, the storage and data is encrypted. The backup and patches, they are all automated and is on pay-as-you-go uh, model. So it runs on uh, Oracle Cloud infrastructure and only in Oracle Cloud infrastructure because it's built uh, using all the uh, Oracle Cloud uh, API. So it's tightly integrated to the uh, uh, cloud services. For example, uh, the uh, virtual network and also the different shapes of the compute instances that we have, um, and as well as the storage. And we also um, 
be able to work with uh, other Oracle cloud services. Uh, in this region, uh, the closer to our uh, um, closer to us in APAC, uh, MySQL database is available in the Tokyo and Mumbai data center. Uh, we are actively and rapidly uh, deploying uh, MySQL database service across the globe. Um, so it will be available in all the Oracle uh, cloud data center uh, yeah, across the globe. So once you have a uh, provision uh, MySQL database service and you do have a list of um, Oracle cloud services that you can take advantage of, right? So we have this MySQL database service and you can actually uh, work with uh, Oracle Cloud Analytics to build dashboard. And you could also work with our serverless uh, cloud services to develop um, you know, serverless application uh, together with MySQL. Okay, so I think that gives you a quick summary of what we have. Uh, just um, you know, recently launched this uh, MySQL database service. So let me just go into the main topic that I want to talk to you about. Um, so I'll talk a little bit uh, on the, the basic requirement um, that a prereq requirement, a prerequisite to develop Python app using MySQL. Again, um, to take advantage of uh, this new AP, uh, the, uh, all the um, innovative uh, functions and features within MySQL, uh, you, you are strong, strongly advised to use the XDev API together with the X plugin, which I think Ivan has just briefly uh, explained earlier. Um, so it works on MySQL 8.0. Um, so whether you're working uh, um, on premises or you know you are thinking about using the cloud database, uh, this is all supported on version eight. And Python 2.x or 3.x uh, supported. And I believe people are now you know, migrating to the version three. And if you are working with Python, uh, all you need to do is to download the MySQL connector for Python, and then you are good to go. Okay, so not forgetting you know, the MySQL shell, which is a very handy tool for you to work with uh, uh, database as far as the uh, JSON object uh, using the NoSQL API. Um, highlight on XDev API. So um, it's, there are quite a bit of uh, differences from, um, from the traditional classic API. Uh, first thing is that uh, uh, we use session um, to connect to the database, which is similar to the uh, classic uh, connection, except uh, you can um, deploy your application with XF API without any code changes to um, whether it's a single or a cluster database server, right? So um, in here you can, uh, and encapsulate the parameters. You can see the port number. This is the X protocol X um, uh, port number. And by default is secure with SSL, TLS and SHA-256 authentication. And I'm gonna talk about, you know, using the schema and collection to work with uh, data. And especially, you know, if you use, if you are, you know, uh, developing for mobile or for internet, um, so you can look at um, using MySQL to work with the JSON object. All right. So the Fluent API, you can see, it's um, it's you know it's something that you already familiar, and improve a lot on uh, readability and also for you to develop the uh, application quickly. So in um, so this is um, the architecture, right? For the uh, Python or XDev API via the X.protocol, export protocol. 
Um, so if you're using Python, uh, strongly advise, um, recommend it to use this to work either with your traditional relational data or NoSQL uh, using JSON. So in fact, uh, you, you, you can do everything, right? Everything using the CRUD API and without going through the SQL. Uh, X protocol is the foundation of uh, making all this uh, cool stuff uh, possible. Um, we developed this uh, is because that we want to enhance the product for the future, the MySQL. Um, and the reason, yeah, the main reason is that um, you know, we're using uh, this Google protocol buffer, which allows us to extend uh, the message format and for future. So it's a lot more flexible uh, for us to support um, you know, any new features that we want in the future. So all this I'll talk about the CRUD API and secure by design. Right, so I hope that very quickly uh, give you, you know, some idea of what you require uh, to develop Python application with MySQL. So no discussion on MySQL um, is complete without talking about InnoDB cluster. So Ipen has shown you um, how easy it is to use MySQL shell to build the cluster but I want to uh, just briefly touch on the architecture so that uh, I could go on to explain how you can uh, fully uh, exploit and leverage this architecture in your Python application. So in um, the cluster configuration, um, we have, uh, there are a couple of options of, uh, developing or deploying the cluster. So one of the most common um, configuration or model we deploy is this single primary uh, cluster. Um, so we have a read write node and these three servers are redundant and the two other server is read only. And to fully leverage the three servers uh, we have this MySQL router as a uh, uh, virtual router for you to talk to the cluster. So in this case, to fully utilize, um, you would um, send your S, uh, update delete uh, insert transaction to port 6446, which will go to the read write server. And for all the read only, you know, checking our status, you know, querying the database, uh, reporting, you would uh, use the this read only port. Okay, so that for the application, that is the two things that you need to know. So 6446 and 6447, in case you are working with InnoDB cluster uh, in the future. And, um, you know, I, I talk about the <laughs> cloud native. And we have, we are seeing a lot more, I mean, a lot of customers and uh, a lot of project deployment are now using Kubernetes. So you can package all this um, uh, uh, scale component. Uh, to, to the Kubernetes infrastructure. So I, I will talk about this uh, later on. So this is the Kubernetes architecture and how the different uh, mass scale component uh, can be deployed to the architecture, right? So uh, I have a short demo to show you. Yep, so, um, so now that you know that uh, we need to have three server to form a cluster, right? So you can't use, um, you know, the container uh, that, that can be downloaded from mysql.com. Um, in order for you to um, deploy this um, efficiently, 
uh, because as you know, um, you know, container it's not long, it's not stable. So and we we are managing data. Um, so the way that you um, would make the data persist is to make use of the persistent volume and then store your data as uh, in the centralized kind of uh, storage architecture. So in that way, um, you know, even though the container goes away, right, your data is still um, persisted and that's still intact. So when you bring up the container, you know, you can still, you know, uh, resume uh, and read those data that you have uh, committed to the uh, storage. All right, so here's a quick demo of uh, a Python application um, that uh, would make use of the cluster efficiently. So on the left-hand side, uh, I'm showing you the, um, the log message from the Python M, right? So it just have to uh, focus on the port number, right? So, um, so I have three server, start with uh, 3310, which is the primary for all the uh, read write transaction. And for the read only transaction, it will go to 3320 and 30. So depending on what you do with this app, uh, this is a shopping list application. So you could see if it's just reading data, refreshing this uh, shopping list, it will go to either two zero or three zero. But if I'm like deleting an item from the shopping list, um, you would uh, see that it goes to the three three one zero, right? So if I do uh, show all, you can see it's uh, you know refreshing from the three three two zero and three zero. Right. And if I were to delete something, so just pause it here a bit in case you missed it. So you can see just now there's a checkbox. Checkbox is just saying that uh, I, I have bought the, the item it, uh, already. I want to delete it from my uh, shopping list. And that got deleted. And you can see it go to the 3310, right? So now I want to put another item in the shopping list. And um, I'll just say uh, something I want to buy for the weekend, right? Uh, cream cheese. So get the cheapest one would do, right? So maybe there's something for your girlfriend or wife to do, you put a note there. So again, you go to 3310, right? Once it's inserted, you do a refresh, it will go to 3330. So if you want to refresh it, you'll go to 3310, I mean, um, I mean delete it, you go to 3310. So in your application Python, uh, those are the two things that you need to know, right? Um, uh, which is the 6446, which the router will translate it and send it to the correct server. And the read only, you will go to the 6447, right? So I hope that give you uh, some idea in your application to take advantage of the cluster. Now, as I uh, explained, um, you know, I've seen a lot of, um, you know, people are now, uh, you know, deploying application in container, in Dockers, and as well as, um, as well as um, uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift. Uh, so here, I just want to show you um, you know, how can you uh, make use of the uh, cluster, um, make use of the uh, Docker container to deploy your mass scale router. All right, so a little bit of uh, explanation here, just pause it a bit. So in order for you to um, um, deploy your Python application, um, typically you would um, uh, work with the mass scale router and that, um, most of the time they are co-located together. So if you are deploying on Docker's, uh, your app will be packaged in a container and there is a MySQL router uh, Docker container that you could use to deploy uh, in the Kubernetes or OpenShift or Swarm environment. 
So here I just want to show you that uh, how you can deploy that. So I have this uh, Moscow router in a container and you could um, use um, and deploy together with your uh, Python application. So just quickly to, sh the, to, to show you how it works. Um, so in this case, I have this MySQL uh, client. Uh, well, actually, I need to you know, use the MySQL shell a lot more. I get uh, so used to MySQL, uh, the classic client. So here, uh, I'm specifying the port 6446. And if you see the actual port, is actually uh, it's connecting to 3310. So that's um, um, how the uh, MySQL router work uh, in a container. Okay, so Kubernetes, uh, you could use uh, Kubernetes uh, to deploy your MySQL in you know, a DB cluster. So here I have a uh, mini uh, which is a scaled down version of uh, Kubernetes, well, poor man version of uh, Kubernetes. So first of all, you need to have a, uh, a namespace being created. So I have a MySQL cluster and just want to show you uh, the various object and container develop. So I'm using the secret uh, object um, to store my uh, MySQL root ID and password. And you can see I have uh, three services running, the tree server. And unfortunately, I'm not too sure why this server is down, but nonetheless, my cluster is still working. Um, I, I recorded this uh, this morning, so I'm not sure what happened to that note. But it's okay, it doesn't it? Uh, you know, uh, it's not a showstopper. Um, so I am going to um, log into one of the server, node zero, and using MySQL shell. So you connect to it. You have seen this earlier uh, in the demo that uh, Ivan shown you. Um, so log on to the uh, port and just do a get status and you send this. All right, so it's the same way how it operates, uh, whether it's in the cloud or it's in your uh, own server and Docker container in the Kubernetes uh, works just fine. Okay, so the last topic I want to talk about is uh, uh, Python REST API uh, with MDS, with MySQL database service. Uh, I have this uh, demo that uh, uh, deploy on the Oracle Cloud, and this is the architecture. So I have a very simple uh, REST API, oops, sorry, REST API uh, developed in uh, Python, uh, just get into the pen mode. So it's deployed in the in the OCI in the public subnet, and they, the data is stored inside the uh, MySQL database service. It's just one table, right? Keep track of the uh, user ID, password. It's it's a simple app uh, to register a user. So if you come across any requirement, um, you know, registration module, you know, mobile application, you know, you can, you know, look at, you know, use this pattern, right? Okay, so I just want to show you a couple of uh, the API. So the slash user, um, it's just basically selecting from the table, you know, this is the table. And it just get all the user ID, name, email, password, right? And then it would send it back as a JSON object. And the second API is a, a add a new user API, right? Um, so, so here's uh, the code that developed, uh, that, that talked to MySQL. So I need to change this to the XF API, right? Yeah. And then the last one is uh, delete and I delete a user. Okay, so very simple, very simple, just to show you uh, 
uh, the idea and how you can deploy this uh, on OCI. So the URL uh, slash user. Okay, let me just uh, switch off the pen mode. It's quite simple, right? So um, it's using the HTTP. So it's just a get method and whoop, well, too fast, right? Just a get method, right? Um, just back a little bit. So you just specify the, uh, um, the URL and uh, that path, and it will just return you a list of um, a list of um, uh, a JSON object. Okay. So if you look into the database, um, so this is on the cloud MDS. Uh, you can see that um, uh, table user, and then if you do a select on that table, it show you the records in there. So that's for the user. And um, in order for you know for you to add or delete, um, be, and it's, it's a more flexible to use this uh, Postman to do it. So I use this to show you how you can uh, add and also delete a uh, record from a database. So for the get method, so it's a similar, right? So you just do a get on the, the path user. And for add, you, you have to um, send it as a post method and then give it a, uh, a JSON object. So expecting an email, ID, name, and password. And, and then when you send that with this JSON object, it will say user added successfully. And if you do a user again, uh, you should see that uh, updated in the database. So, so it's five, six, seven. And let's just say you want to delete the record number six. Um, you could do, um, I apologize for this. Uh, I think I, I didn't do a good job editing. Uh, yeah, I think I I I I I've edited uh, wrongly. Oh no, uh, the deleting yeah deleting work. Um, just I'm not sure what doesn't show up in the URL. So it's the same thing. Uh, you just have to uh, give it uh, the delete and then slash six, and that record number six will get the deleted. Okay, so um, so now that you have, I mean, you've seen how it works, right? So using, I mean, I think most of you are, or some of you have done this before. So when you deploy to the uh, OCI or the cloud, uh, you can take advantage of the Oracle Cloud. Um, there's this API gateway, which provide you added security and control uh, to your backend uh, API service. So you can um, uh, specify uh, the number of requests per second that you want to you, you want to limit on the API, and there's this uh, matrix just now um, too fast not the video. Um, this shows you you know the API request and what's the response. Uh, so if you if so for for typical you know REST API application. Uh, it's difficult for you to, you know, do this uh, throttling. So you can rely on, you know, um, API gateway, you know, uh, services to do that for you. So to create the deployment, so once you have a gateway, you just deploy the, uh, uh, deploy the uh, 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 API. Um, this is a bit too fast, apologize for it. So, um, so you specify the path, and then these are the policy that you can attach to the API gateway, whether it needs authentication, uh, how many requests that you are putting on the API that give you, a, uh, you know, some protection for the API as well as the, the database. 
So once you have done that, uh, so the path U1, it's the user, uh, it's the user API call. So now I'm building a virtual API gateway to front this uh, Python application. So, um, so now, in, so you can also set those uh, yeah, parameters. So now um, you would access the API via the uh, API gateway IP address, right, which is this one, right? So 158, rather than you know, the slash user. So you are now, we are now providing a virtual API gateway uh, in front of your API uh, application. So we'll do the security control and throttling to protect your API. So that uh, very simply is the API gateway. So in summary, uh, I've talked about uh, the MySQL database service, which is an ideal uh, cloud native service for you know, your microservices or cloud native development project. Uh, if you're interested to use MySQL on, you know, on Docker or Kubernetes, here's a few link. Right? And you know, I've shown you how you can deploy a uh, REST API together with MySQL Cloud database with uh, API Gateway. And if you're interested to try out the MySQL database service, we have this uh, trial account, uh, free trial. Uh, which gives you 300 US dollars for 30 days to try out uh, MySQL database and, and other you know, Oracle Cloud service. So with that, I think I have exceeded a little bit. Thank you so much uh, for your time. And if there's time uh, and question, uh, I can take a couple of questions. There's one. Oh, Maybe okay. Participants, uh... Do you have uh, any uh, questions? So you can uh, you can you can yep. unmute your mic or uh, or type your questions on the chat. Yep. So I think it looks like uh, everybody is cool. And uh, yep, um, no questions. Then I would thank everybody for attending this. And if you have any questions, uh, drop an email and uh, happy to help. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sammy, uh, yeah, to yeah, inviting me to do this. <laughs> thank you. That's one. Oh, that's, thank you. Yep, thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, so we will have a, so we will have a topic, and then uh, the next sessions will be uh, Python debugging uh, pro tips and lots of obvious uh, uh, obvious uh, tricks by Dev uh, Goffin from Microsoft. This session will be started from uh, 3 40. 15 minutes later. <laughs>